Hello and welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us in our Spotlight series. Today's topic is the importance of updating software. Quick introductions from uh, your presenters today. Uh, I am Matt Miller, the one on the left, uh, Senior Product Manager here on the Product Management Team with uh, Latera Microsystems. Joining me today is my colleague Jason Vandermeer. I'll let him say hello. Hello. How's everybody doing today? Hope you're all doing well. So quick, a uh, couple quick housekeeping items. Um, everybody is automatically on mute for the entirety of today's session. If you want to reach out to Jason and I uh, for questions that you might have uh, that come up as we're presenting materials, there is a chat window within the GoToMeeting controls. Go ahead and chat those uh, questions to us. We'll pick them up at the end of today's 30-minute uh, webinar and we'll answer those questions there. If for some reason we don't get to your question, on today's call, we'll follow up with you directly uh, with answers to your questions. Uh, and that then covers the last piece there. Again, there's a little chat window within the GoTo controls for you to uh, converse with us. I'm going to hand it over to Jason to, to walk through what the agenda of today's session will be, and then we'll kind of get into the meat of today's presentation. Sure. So, hi, everybody. This is Jason Vandermeer again. So, you know, obviously the, the title of this this webinar today is the importance of updating software and, and some of us cringe when we hear that word, you know, updating software, that phrase updating software. And, and you know, Matt and I have been, you know, discussing this topic quite a bit and, and we get it. It's a pain. It's tricky. We don't want to do it. Uh, we've both been there before. We've worked in roles where we, where we have to manage the, uh, the software being updated. But the reality is, is it's uh it's something we're being pushed to do and it's a reality of the world that we live in and going forward it's only going to move faster and we have to deal with it with our vendors and third parties here at latera microsystems and uh you know all of our customers have to deal with it as well so you know there's a change aspect to it you can you can fight the change and resist or we can change our behavior and find innovative ways to uh to to embrace uh, updating software more rapidly and and get the benefits of it. So, you know, today we'll walk through a couple of things. You know, we, we have them listed here, uh, market dynamics, you know, with modern platforms moving to cloud rapid delivery uh, based platforms. Uh, we'll go into some of the best practices of, of, you know, how we can embrace that change and, you know, how it can benefit all of our users. And finally, you know, we'll talk about uh, how security is encompassed in, in updating software as well, and you know how the rapid changes are often a response to security, and it behooves us to update that software to take advantage of those uh, of the security uh, um, vulnerability fixes. So, Matt, do you want to dive into market dynamics and to share what we've been what we've been seeing here? Sure. Um, so, Jason mentioned we you know we don't want to have to up. up upgrade our software or our platforms um, as continuously as we might be getting pushed these days. But the reality of the situation is we are being pushed. So when we look at uh, the market, the, the legal market as a product management team here at Air, um, Litera Microsystems, we're, you know, some of the key factors we look at and, and data points we look at are what would Microsoft do or what is Microsoft doing? Uh, and we'll dive into some of those big key announcements and what we see Microsoft doing, who's really, as well, in the conclusion you'll see here today, they're really the 800 pound gorilla in the room that is pushing a lot of where the legal technology space is moving. Best practices, as, as Jason mentioned, it's hard to upgrade people. Change management is difficult, but um, there are some best practices we've seen in working with um, folks like yourselves on the phone to be successful for these uh, rapid deployments and rapid updates of our technology stacks. And then, sir, you know, we're always surveying and as well as going out and talking to folks like you on the phone and getting a pulse for, you know, what is really happening within the law firms. And, and so what is some of that data we're seeing and hearing from folks like yourself? So first off, what, what would Microsoft do? And, you know, for some time now, Microsoft has been uh, touting their mobile first, cloud first uh, capability set to, to the user community. So they want their their um, user community as a whole to be able to have access to their data wherever and where, whenever they want. Um, but not only do we see Microsoft doing that, we also see another big player in the industry making strides in that direction. So 
when Jason and I are looking at market trends, we're not only saying these days what is Microsoft doing, but what is the largest document management system that is deployed amongst our customer base doing? So what is iManage doing? And obviously, uh, if you look at some of the 2017 ILTA technology surveys, iManage has a very, very strong uh, foothold in the legal market as the kind of the biggest player in document management system. Now, iManage taking a playbook uh, you know, what you could say taking a play from Microsoft is moving to and has capabilities now on iManage Cloud. So they realize that there is this technology shift. Microsoft, there's a change in our workforce dynamics where people don't want to work in silos. They want to have their content securely accessible wherever and whenever uh, they want. If I take a step back from that, just some other, other key pieces we've seen Microsoft, these are just a couple other key instances where Microsoft, uh, you know, that 800 pound gorilla is pushing towards a more continuous update or cloud uh, technology stack platform. Their announcement um, earlier, or actually was, I think it was later last year around starting in 20, October uh, 13th of 2020, um, it, it will be necessary to have 365 and Pro Plus Office Perpetual and Mainstream support to connect to 365 services. So this was a big one, probably one of the biggest ones, and I know on the, the, the discussion chat boards, this one um, brought quite a bit of conversation, but Microsoft basically saying if you want to use those licensing models, you're going to need to stay current on the latest versions of Office. So continuous, continuous uh, updates um, is what is Microsoft is pushing us to there. When it released its um, and hopefully everyone's somewhat familiar with Microsoft's app model platform. Another big push for Microsoft is basically pushing vendors or party plugins to the, the office suite to use its app model capability set. So when it released the app model and it's continued to promote the app model pretty heavily, it's always stated that, and it continues to state when it talks about the app model, that those classic extensibility models will be supported. We're not sunsetting them, we're really not investing in them. We'll support them, but what we would love our technology vendors to be doing is investing in app models. So these, these, these almost more software as a service technology solutions to be able to keep up with what Microsoft is looking to do, and that is continuously update its platform for its user base. Now, I, I do throw this last one in here. This was at last year's Ignite conference, Microsoft, uh, did what I'll call pump the brakes a little bit on some of these um, on some of these comments about you know needing to connect to three, wanting to connect to 365 services. It with the release of Office 2019, they'll make 2019 available. Um, but kind of how we're what you'll see from a market dynamic and really what some of the big players in the industry are doing. 2019 will be um, I, you know more of a, a band-aid solution for really what the inevitable is going to be in the future. But Microsoft is giving us kind of a, a path to uh, maybe if we're not, if we're still a little bit more adverse from a, a technology um, or cloud technology platform perspective. All right, so we take that 800 pound gorilla and we'll add into the room the elephant as what we'll call it. The other big key, key driving factor that we see in the market that's really pushing kind of continuous update models um, and want, you know, this changing workforce is going to want their content uh, accessible at all points in time. So what we see um, is this initial stat here that is from the US, U.S. Bureau of Labor Stats is that millennials have overtaken the majority representation of the workforce. And we know these people are, are hyper technology focused that have grown up with the internet. Their expectations of technology and tech platforms is um, one where they're going to want their content accessible, not in a siloed kind of environment. And continuing on those U.S. Uh, uh, Bureau of Labor stats is their predictions, you know, ex extending out into the years 2030, where the very large percentage of our workforce, 75% of our workforce, will be made up with, um, of this user group. Uh, the last stat here is um, just a, a stat I pulled uh, from Business Insider, and this is when when asked um, millennials, uh, so would they pull millennials, and I will say everybody else, uh, in terms of their, their level of being displeased 
um, with using legacy systems or siloed systems. Six, uh, millennials are 60% more frustrated if they're working in these legacy systems that don't give them the flexibility that they're they're really after from their technology from their technology platforms. All right, from there, we're, uh, the, the last piece of market dynamics we're going to cover is surveys. And as I mentioned, we spend a lot of time talking to customers, like folks like yourselves on the phone, but as well as looking at surveys and running our own um, surveys. So the first one here is a survey that Terra Microsystems ran last year at ILTA. Um, we ran a, a host of questions, but I thought this one was, was good for today's uh, webinar. And does the, lawyer, uh, does the lawyer user base influence technology buying decisions? 76% of, of the people that responded said absolutely yes. So if we couple that with what we just looked at in market dynamics, which is we have a workforce that is millennials who want to use non-siloed technology and, ha and have their documents accessible wherever on whatever device, as well as they have heavy influential power, um, those are those are, are very important market data points for us at Latera Microsystems as well as for you, you know, the, helping to serve that customer base. Um, the last piece here, or, or another piece here, is this is 2017 ILTA Technology Survey, and for the upcoming year, how do you predict the firm's adoption of cloud-based solutions will change? You can see very large increase across all sizes of law firms. So. You guys know this too. You, you're feeling the, you're feeling what iManage is doing. You're feeling what Microsoft is doing, um, and you are, you know that you need to be preparing for these things. Obviously, with this comes certain challenges. And you know, Jason, why don't um, you talk about what are some of the challenges we see with uh, adopting these types of technologies at, at law firms? Sure. Uh, so this is another survey that we have, uh, again, from the ILTA 2017 uh, tech survey. And let me see if I can turn my little spotlight on right here. And, and you know, Matt covered a number of, 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 of items, right, how major vendors that we all buy from and we all partner with, Microsoft and iManage, are moving to the cloud, which means they're going to be updating more often, right? At the same time, we see that the core user base is driving decisions around what technology we have and what, what technology we use uh, are, are, are the lawyers and both their age demographic as well as how law firms are listening to them are really going to push you know, technology decisions forward, right? And if we look here and look at these top two items, the top two uh, biggest security challenges are going to be balancing said security with usability and user acceptance of the technology and security solutions and their behavior around this. And for us, this is really important because to us, this speaks that not only do we have these dynamics of continuous updates through cloud solutions, that we have this huge demographic that's influencing uh, what technology we're going to buy, but the biggest challenges for security is the, the usability of those solutions. So as we move forward and start to adopt these, we need to not only make sure that these are secure, but making sure that they're usable to, uh, to the end users. And further, if we look, let's click to the, to the next line. Further, if we look, the uh, top three biggest uh, technology annoyances is going to be security and user acceptance to change. So the reason why these are important to wrap this up is as we move into uh, how we're developing our products and how we're releasing to them, we need to iteratively be able to balance the security dynamics, which we'll talk about a, later, a little bit later on, uh, meaning that if there's vulnerabilities found, we need to have uh, countermeasures and mitigation to release as soon as possible for those. But then we also need to take into account design uh, as we're releasing uh, you know, these, these updates so that the user population is going to continuously adopt these, right? And, and we'll go into this a little bit later, but that means more rapid deployments, more updates more often that provide incremental change for the users, not big change, but is also including 
uh, the user's feedback into that design. Right, so these are all dynamics that are coming together that are a wave behind us that are pushing in this direction. So Matt, why don't you talk about uh, you know, what we're doing in terms of best practices to kind of help support uh, our customer population and the user community in these changes? Sure, so um, a couple things that we at Latera Microsystems focus on from an adoption perspective. One is uh, we found success by making adoption an iterative process. So this is um, a timeline, and I'll kind of speak to some of the, these things. So obviously we'll roll out software, we'll have this potentially big launch day, but it's kind of everything that happens after that um, where we've seen success in working with some of our law firm customers to really gain that adoption and momentum and getting the user community, getting full benefit of the application. So um, what we, we call them buzz days or email campaigns. But so the, the software is now out and you're sending out just a simple, short, consumable, easily consumable one um, key feature ex explaining what this key feature is for some new piece of technology or, or technologies that have gone out just getting excitement about that one feature. If we can just get them using one thing and using one thing well, um, we can probably get them using another component um, of that same software suite. So as those buzz days, as they continue to gain buzz with the software, you're gonna hear stories internally of people who've had success with the application. And that's where we get to these scenario spotlights. If you can get a, a key user at the firm, uh, ahead of a practice area to say, I, you know, and, and highlight his or her story about how they've had success with the technology back to um, their teams or the larger organization, that is a very powerful statement and can really help drive the momentum of adoption. And you can see we just kind of iterate on that and continue to run with that. And, not, and this is not for just um, one technology, but we really think this model works well for any and all technologies, especially a continuous update model uh, technology stack um, that you might have. We've also found um, these CLE courses uh, to be beneficial. So if you can tie technology to uh, a CLE uh, credit for the attorneys, that it really works out to be a win-win situation. Um, so we've, and some of you might be familiar with our contract companion solution we've had, um, are able to offer it as a CLE course. We don't, we don't, it's not training on contract companion, it's really um, abstracted from that by saying it's a discussion on proofreading within legal and, and best practices around proofreading and, and as part of best practices using technology or automation um, to help with that type of work. Um, with the point being here, the more that you can make this a win-win situation, these new technologies a win-win situation, the, the, the more adoption you're going to have for these types of things. So that's some of the, you know, uh, the, the feedback and, and success we've seen with some of our customers in adapting some of the technologies and, and stuff we continue to talk with customers about as they look to move to this more rapid update platforms. But let's take a step back from there and talk about, you know, how, how do third-party vendors um, and, and the, the Latera Microsystems um, look at and, and um, develop and, and look at their software internally from a continuous update uh, perspective? Sure. So what we have here is, is a, a very common model for uh, what's called continuous integration and continuous delivery, right? It's, it's, a, it's a software development lifecycle that's uh, iterative and cyclical, right? You, you get feedback. You define requirements, you, you break it down, build, test, release, and then you put it back out into the market and get, gather feedback and then start it all over again. So, you know, you know, first and foremost, Volterra Microsystems is a software development company, right? We service multiple verticals. And in servicing those industry verticals, primarily uh, in legal, we want to do it well. We want to follow the best practices. And that's what we have adopted here. So we release quarterly. Uh, we run uh, a very rigorous software development uh, lifecycle platform uh, where we're, we're always listening to the market. We're getting uh, feedback into our pipeline, and we're getting it out fast. And, and we, we were chatting earlier about some of the tech survey uh, data around you know, balancing usability with security and how one of the biggest, um, the biggest tech challenges is getting people to, 
to adopt and you know leverage the software. So you know Matt discussed a little bit about some of the programs that we run to kind of lead people along to help them uh, to, to help them you know further adopt the software. But with this development cycle, we're also able to encompass that feedback faster and get solutions out uh, more often. And, and as Matt mentioned, Microsoft is moving to this model, right, with with the uh, with with Office 365 and the licensing model and the cloud deployment platforms that are coming out uh, after the next version of Office. And obviously iManage and NetDocs, uh, major DMS providers, are, are also experimenting and, and moving forward with, with cloud solutions. Obviously NetDocs has been uh, in that way for a while, but iManage is more pushing towards the cloud solution. So we're gonna see more of this more often uh, updates coming out and more change happening, so we have to be able to embrace this. And, and further, you know, let's go into some of the benefits that you'll get from uh, adopting a continuous uh, update and delivery model. So, so first is, is we're able to get things out to the market faster, including issues that are reported, as well as integrations with third parties, right? So we, as we know, iManage and Microsoft are going to be deploying updates even faster than they were before, we need to be able to nimbly respond and integrate those even sooner, right? So that means that you know, we can't wait eight months or a year to release a major version or to release an update uh, that has these. We need to do these continuously uh, every six to 12 weeks as these major vendors are introducing fixes, introducing improvements, things that the market demands. As Matt mentioned, and as I alluded to as well, uh, increasing adoption is, is a huge challenge for everybody when, when you're looking at a piece of software and you're trying to figure out what the ROI is for it. And again, as we mentioned, the usability of this, uh, this growing demographic is becoming uh, more and more important. We need to listen and incorporate that feedback faster and get it back to you as our customers even faster to be able to bump that ROI up even fast, even more to appreciate uh, the investment that you made. So continuous update and continuous delivery is also allowing us to, to listen and respond quickly to get the user base what they need to, to leverage and, and gain value out of the product. And then finally, with continuous update and integration, we can mitigate risks faster, right? You know, as I mentioned, we're a software development firm. We leverage third parties that uh, have the best practices for certain uh, aspects of our software, and we integrate those into our software. It's a common thing that all software vendors do, but we need to make sure that we're reviewing those very often to make sure that we're including the latest versions of these third party software, and this is including integrations with Microsoft and the DMS providers, to make sure that as they are mitigating uh, vulnerabilities that are found uh, that we're including those countermeasures as well. And our goal is to not to be uh, the vector for a successful attack, right? So we are committed to always stay up to date with the latest versions of third parties and to be compatible with the third parties in terms of our touch points uh, so that our latest versions can never be the, uh, the attack vector for, um, for, uh, for an attack. So, and that leads into security as well, right? So we'll step through this a little bit. And, you know, as I mentioned, you know, third parties are a huge part of, of our software. And, and in part of the goal of, you know, we, we will not be a, an attack vector, every, every release we're looking at these third parties and ensuring that we're integrating the latest versions of those libraries and of those resources to make sure that we're completely up to date. And we've incorporated this into our software development life cycle. So every release that we make, which is quarterly, we're running automated scans to make sure that any vulnerabilities found are mitigated and that we're getting those, uh, those fixes and that protection out to you as our customers in our latest versions, right? So security is baked into our software development life cycle in an automated way. And then finally, you have to prepare on your end. We're, we're doing what we can to find these latest items, to work with the third parties, to make sure that the latest versions are available, and we're including your feedback from your core users that are pushing us to make these more usable. But 
that's only halfway there. You got to take it and you got to get it out to gain the benefits of that. And again, this is where we are now. These are the challenges that we're facing. As we move more into cloud deployment, uh, and as Microsoft and DMS providers are going to be more uh, rapidly deploying these versions, we have to come up with uh, with uh, with life cycles all, all across the board, both in the customers as well as vendors, to be able to adopt these and get these out to uh, to gain the benefits from these. So, you know, Matt, you know, do you want to wrap this up and, and you know kind of bring us to conclusion and share some of the uh, the thoughts? Yeah. All right. So, in, in conclusion, with the last couple of minutes here, uh, you know, what are some of the key takeaways as we as we kind of opened up today? We really have not one but two uh, big beasts in the room. The gorilla, what we mentioned was Microsoft Word. Microsoft is pushing us to a mobile first, cloud first uh, strategy. And that, and that is going to be their, their play over the years to come. So um, that is something absolutely key to watch. And we saw we talked about some of the key announcements that they've, they've made around um, that technology stack. The other big one is is our our customer base. Who who are the attorneys these days? They, it is largely made up by, and it will be largely made up by more than largely made up by this millennial workforce, and having intuitive, easy to use applications, which uh, will help us avoid these instances where these these tech savvy folks might deviate from what our standard technology stack is and move towards uh, something that they deem to be more interesting. Um, is 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 obviously something we want to avoid from an IT department kind of nightmare. So um, with that, we appreciate everybody's time today. We're going to pause briefly uh, to queue up some of the questions, and we'll be back in about 30 seconds to to answer some of those. All right, thanks everybody. All right, we had two questions come in. Um, probably all the time we have today is for those. Um, but again, if you if you do think of something, uh, let us know, and we'll, we'll we can answer it off hours. Um, the first one, I'll throw it to Jason. But you know, as we look at our technology providers, what are some of those key questions we can be asking them to to make sure they're preparing themselves for 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 these inevitable um, changes in in workforce as well as technology. Right. So the, I think I think the, the two big things that come to mind is, you know, when we're looking at software providers are trying to rapidly integrate uh, security and, uh, and usability, you know, with rapid deployment, uh, you know, we have to be careful in balancing, you know, time with quality uh, with requirements. Right. So the biggest thing to ask are two things that come to mind is what are you doing about quality, right? You're moving fast, you're making change uh, to the software more often. What are you doing about quality? What's your what's your quality program like? You know, we don't want to hear it's just going to be a bunch of people in the room clicking around. We need to move to automated tools to really, uh, you know, hammer in and you know make sure these things are working well. The other thing is is around security again around automation. You know, everybody always says. Security is important to us, right? We're, we're always looking at security, but what are you doing, right? It's not just someone reading a couple of articles and saying, okay, I was trained to code securely. It's what automated tools are we doing to look up against robust uh, knowledge bases to find and zero in on the universe of vulnerabilities and making sure those are highlighted and included in there. So the two big things to look for, I would say, are, are quality uh, and security, both from an automation standpoint. All right, thanks, Jason. And we're right up at our, our 30 minute time mark, so I think that's a, that's a good place to end. Again, if we didn't get to your question today, we will follow up with you directly. Um, both Jason and I want to thank everybody for their time, and we hope to see you at ILTA.